it's Wednesday the 10th of April 2024. And in this evening's show, we catch up on the two uh, last games, games since last pod, both 1-0 home victories against Cambridge and Fleetwood, respectively, uh, which somehow keeps the season alive. The pool still mathematically able to sneak into the playoffs. God knows how. I'm John Asperall, and this is the Seaside's podcast, Match Action Show. Blackpool 1, Fleetwood 0, and Blackpool 1, Cambridge 0. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Sea Sounders podcast on a Wednesday evening. We've got two matches to recap on this evening in the panel studio, whatever you want to call it, are Nick and Mitch. Tim, aka Judith Chalmers, is supposed to be joining just us. Just messaged um, laptop playing up. <laughs> Normality. What can you resumed. say? <laughs> the Grice Reaper is on the bench. <laughs> Viewers, listeners, shall we get him off the bench? Let's make it a fun cast and get Andy Grice on. <laughs> right after. Well, Tim says, he, I think he's trying to um, sort it out as we speak. Okay, we may have a special guest dropping in for the Fleetwood section, but there's been a few... Um, Gremlins on YouTube this evening, but um, it appears that everyone is streaming on this is streaming on YouTube. Everyone's in the comments, uh, as AMAC has just said on YouTube. YouTube, good evening, Critchley disciples. Now, the Grice Reaper is definitely not a Critchley disciple. Where, where do you stand at the moment, Nick? You were on the fence, weren't you? Um, probably still where I was. I, I you know, he's not going in there, is he? Whether uh, you know anybody thinks he should be. Um, I think we covered it on the last pod, didn't we, in terms of what probably needs to happen for next season. There's only a few games left now and, and you know, things aren't going to change. So, I, I give him into next season and and see where we're at um, as we're about to, to cover, you know, the last two games. It's six points. Um, I can't say I'm feeling like we've, we've turned a corner and we're, you know, we're, we're flying in to get that last playoff place, playing uh, scintillating football, but <laughs> we're still in there, aren't we? That's the thing. We uh, we we don't want to let it go, so we will we'll see what happens over the the remaining games. But yeah, it was there was bits that were okay. There were bits that were a, a bit boring, but that's been the largely the story of the season, hasn't it? Mitch, um, Nick has been issuing rallying cries for. A trip to Carlisle. I'm, I'm on the fence, even with a free ticket. How? Yeah, where do you, st- where do you stand on this hot topic? The hot topic. I I miss Michael Appleton personally. <laughs> I I think we should never have got rid of him. Oh no. Um, look, I before we got him back, I wrote about two and a half thousand words on why we shouldn't get Neil Critchley back. But then we got him back and we stuck with him, aren't we? So basically what Nick said is where we're at, you know, what's the point? We can strop all we like, but we're not going to get anything out of it now, are we? See what happens. Review it. Those famous words. We just stuck with him. Well, the, the big um, fundraising thing that they're doing for the South Stand, I really do think they should just, you know, we should put about 2,000 quid in to get a giant banner on there just saying we're stuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably... I don't think Simon would allow that, would he? Would well, I don't know. You know, his next address could be just right. Everyone moaning, just look at the banner. That's it. And then the end of it. Right, as I'm frantically, frantically making this banner. Pool one, Cambridge nil at the weekend. Uh, I didn't go to the game, caught bits of it. You two obviously went. Um, he wants to regale the listeners with the uh, scintillating fair on Bloomfield Road over the weekend. Blackpool one, Cambridge nil. Um, well, I thought first half we 
you know, it wasn't bad. We had a bit of tempo about us, tried to get on the front foot. Sonny Carey was getting into some pockets of space um, and scored a good goal. You know, there's, there's, there's at times there's a, a reluctance, seems to be a reluctance to shoot from the edge of the area. And, you know, there's large sections of the crowd shouting shoot every time somebody gets the ball in and around that area. And he did. And, you know, you shoot, you score. Um, decent finish. Then really the, the, the second, you know, I was thinking at half time, right, if we carry that into the second half, it, it's it's not a bad performance at all, really. But um, we didn't. And and they came back into it. And but for a wonder save from Grimmy um, and them hitting the post rather than it just trickling in, um, you know, they could have been back into it and you probably would have said that they might have deserved it. Um, but it didn't happen and we we got over the line. I, I was walking out and an old bloke said to me, oh, bloody hell, that was underwhelming. And, you know, it, it, it was hard to disagree. Um, you know, second half, you look where they are in the table. Um, we didn't look like the side on the edge of the playoffs, but then we... I suppose we rarely have done, have we? And you could argue at this stage of the season that it's more about just getting the points on the board. But it, you know, there's a recurring theme, isn't there, in terms of performances? And this was another one that was a little bit flat in in large patches. Um, but ultimately, we got the win, and it it, it keeps us <laughs> keeps that that faint hope going, doesn't it? Mitch, in my show notes, I've put. Um... Kwasi and Beasley, decent combo in the first half. Showed a bit of promise. And I've also penned Dyer second half and lucky to win. Where do you stand yeah, on that? I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we at one point were this sort of um, joint presidents of the big men up front society. Um, but that said, I was a little surprised by that, that selection. Um, when I saw the team sheet, I thought, you know, the bingo machine's gone into overdrive with that. Um you don't normally have a big man and a big man. And it seemed to be sort of a forward line that was far away from the idea of sort of sexy football as you could imagine. But actually it worked okay. And I think I agree with Nick. We weren't bad first half. I mean, we weren't great. We wasn't, you know, it wasn't like one of those games where you're on your feet and just rolls waves of attacking football whilst delighted applause rolls from the stands but we we were you know, we were by far the better team first half um we we had all the play and i thought that it was almost like you're going to laugh when i say this but it was almost like having those two up front you got a bit of what brought what what i always used to bang on about was so important about medine because we could we could get it direct and it would stick it would, you know, it would stick or it would come back and we could play in the space behind those. And, you know, and, and Dembele is our best player, isn't he? And then probably Byers is probably the second best player. Um, and I rate Carey a lot. And it actually worked pretty well playing off those two big lads and getting those players involved. And Coulson was getting involved as well. And we, we played a lot of the game in the right place. Um, so... I suppose fair play to him for doing something slightly different, um, you know, other than it was unexpected and it worked quite well for 45 minutes. But then it was the same thing that we've seen time and time again, as soon as they did anything to counter what we were doing. So I, I literally watched at half time, some big lump from their bench came on to go and sit at the back to counter our big lads and that was basically the end of us. We were we were baffled, and it was that same story again. Of yeah, so the initial setup worked okay, but then a tweak, and we had absolutely nothing to to sort of combat that. And we we struggled in the second half really quite a lot. Cambridge were crap. I mean, they didn't make chance after chance after chance. And as Nick said, there was that one. What was a wonderful save from Grimmy? It really was a wonderful save, but. Against a, a half decent team, you, you feel like we could have got we could have got cut to bits in the second half because we really just couldn't we just couldn't couldn't do anything. And the subs we made with the sort of same like for like kind of subs that really just didn't have any impact. And if anything, made us slightly less effective. So 
it was probably the season in a nutshell in that respect, in that when it went for us, we were fine. We probably should have got a second goal in the first half. Sonny could have easily had another, probably could have had two more. Um, and when it didn't go for us, we didn't have an answer. Dave Jenkins, I feel like I've watched the same game about 15 times this season. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, but on. It is a bit Groundhog Day, isn't it? Well, I, I, I thought on the way to the game the other day, I said, I, I couldn't believe that the, uh, well, I've only got two games left because I'm not going to red in whatever happens. There's no way I can make it. So I've got two games left, you know, barring a miracle. And I thought, two games left, and it doesn't really feel like the season started. Do you know what I mean? You still feel yeah. like I'm waiting for it to actually start. There's, there's actually a pre-season vibe at home games at the moment. I mean, we're coming on to Fleetwood, but when we've scored against Fleetwood, I, I didn't really jump or do anything. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, just on, on the Cambridge. The just on the Cambridge game, B puts in the comments, which I think both me and Nick glossed over, was there was that brilliant Grimmy stop, but there was also the one where they hit the post, yeah, um, which was agonising. It was kind of right in line with me, and it really, really looked for all the world like it was just going to clip the inside of the post and go in, and it just, I'm convinced it took a little bobble on the pitch and just realigned itself mm, and hit the last post. Last second, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was very close, that one. So if the impossible happens, we make the playoffs and go up, that bubble could be season-defining. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, now anything more to say about that Cambridge game? What was the, what was the mood leaving the ground? As the uh, full -time like I, said, I think it, it was just a little bit flat, you know, because that second half... Um, you know, they, they should have probably got something out of the game. So it felt like we'd we got away with it a little bit and it was just another performance where you didn't you didn't feel massively enthused with it. Although we'd got the win, you know, we've talked about before where we've had home wins, but you've it, it's very kind of formulaic and you you're not that excited, which sounds weird when you've you've got three points, but that that just was a little bit what it what it felt like. You know, there wasn't a lot to get you off your seat in the second half and you're looking at it and it's you know, sort of a bottom six team, but well, they look like the the side more likely in that in that second half. Hey, Mac, I actually forgotten that I'd watched the Cambridge game. <laughs> yeah, it's like, did this game happen? Did it actually happen? Yeah, all of the same games, but yeah, we've come away with three points anyway. The seasons, the season's still on life support, not dead yet. Uh, next up was um, Blackpool versus Fleetwood on Wednesday evening. Change the graphic over there. Tuesday. Um, Tuesday, sorry, yeah. As there's no Tim, as he can't work his laptop out, I've uh, just dug someone else out. I don't know, this this guy, this Fleetwood fan. I hope he's not sweary, John. Yeah, uh, well, he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's had his cards marked, it is. The sea bomber from Fleetwood, <laughs> our old friend, Mr. Ben Napper. Yeah. Nappers. It's it's been a long time, mate. It's been a long time, but it's uh, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming on, mate. No, it's great to see you. Thank you for having me on after the last time. I do appreciate it. Your voice sounds a lot deeper when we last spoke, and you look a bit older as well. So yeah, yeah. Good. could pass for sixteen now. I think. <laughs> Great to see you in good health, Ben. Anyway, after your uh, your health Appreciate scares, we, we were all a bit worried, and uh, you know, we're glad you pulled through. And um, what a better way to yeah. make you feel better than a trip to Bloomfield Road? Um, not very, not a happy hunting ground for Fleetwood, is it? Uh, no, five times when fans have been there, lost all five. Um, <laughs> that's the first time I've come out of the ground not bothered. I, I wasn't nervous before yesterday. I was there like. Well, it's been an awful season. What could have gone wrong has gone wrong. And I didn't really expect anything really from the game. We got nothing. So, you know, I think at the end, obviously, when, when you know, something goes in, you kind of think, oh, maybe then the, the flag goes up. And I kind of thought, well, at first I thought, well, was it a foul? Or then obviously seeing it back, it looks slightly offside. Oh, yeah, but a tough one to take. Out of all the Blackpool Fleetwood games, that we've had over the past, you know, six, seven years. The one that always sticks in my mind was the one when 
we were kind of at our absolute bottom of the barrel and we somehow managed to beat you one nil without actually having a shot on goal all game and it came by yeah. our own goal. And that. and Nathan Pond the Preston fan born in Preston, Fleetwood legend, puts it in his own back of the net. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that got mentioned to me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't write it. Oh dear. Right, let's go on out the Fleetwood game then. Um Ben, um did you notice Charlie Adam enthusiastically clapping the Fleetwood fans at the beginning? Yeah. I personally thought he was trying to state a point there because um, what was the general re- reaction at Fleetwood when he was appointed? I know there's, he's been getting a bit of stick, hasn't he, because of his Blackpool mm. connections. Yeah, um, well, it's interesting you say that because the first thing I said, I went, I'm very intrigued because he clapped the Reading fans. And I thought, right, because he's been getting some stick for going to Blackpool game. And they're like, well, he watched against Peterborough. Well, we had Peterborough in April, we had Blackpool in April. Like, you, you know, you kind of need a gist to see it. And on the TV, you don't really see everything. And he'd gone down to Cheltenham as well. So I had no problem with it. Um, I think if he played for Blackburn, there'd be no issues. But because of the connections with Blackpool, there was a, an issue for some. Um, he, he come in and he was dealt a hard rack, really. You know, four players, you know, that he had to get rid of were, were key players for us in the team. The Vela was a captain. Mary was a key striker. Josh Earl, you know, there's three, three of the four that kind of left early under him. And he, he kind of, you know, had to get rid of some of the, to the loan ease that he had. So um, he brought a lot of plays in. I think we, I think we brought some like seven plays in. I think five were on deadline day. Um, so, you know, this squad isn't good enough, it, you know, whether, you know, it was Charlie Adam or Pep Guardiola having it in charge, he wouldn't you know, be good enough for this division. So he's given us fight back. We are in every single game, although sometimes like yesterday, you saw, for example, you could have had a couple, you know, you could have had, you, know, you could have had the penalty, you could have had a man sent off. We're still in game, we're still fighting, bar the Oxford game. So he's given us a bit of fight and a bit of endeavour and a bit of enthusiasm. But it is very interesting because I, I thought it was, he over-egged the fleet with Hans a little bit and I thought right walking back well I'm, I was waiting for the for the clap really because I thought I kind of think right now I think he, he realizes he kind of not just needs to ignore it or ignores whatever he gets and a bit like Ian Everett does to be fair um because he's kind of got to think well I'm in a new role now and you know is it really worth it for for, for 15 seconds okay the uh let's go through the game then um Ben a very bright Start for Fleetwood and you'll have to yes. help me with this guy's name. I'm at Cherry, is that it? Promise I'm a Cherry, yes. <laughs> um, put clean through. Um, mm. and Jimmy Husband, obviously an ex Fleetwood player. I, th- I thought it was quite comical almost the way he got back. He stood with his arm up, claiming offside. It's not given. Yeah. And it just yeah. sort of happened in slow motion how he got yeah. back and. It's just mm. like, all right, then I'll t- it's like, all right, then I'll take the ball off you. Yeah, well, Promise is one of those types of players where he scored at Lincoln a similar goal where he went clean through and he he, he took it around the goalkeeper and I thought he took it too far. He just stabbed it in, like, like on the line, basically, like next to the goal. And he has got, every time he shoots, he gets a lot of power on his shot and his touch. He's like he's like a trampoline at times. Um, but that's kind of what we were doing all game, wasn't we? Like that long, that kind of long ball over the top line and would flick it on to promise. And kind of you were getting it out to the, to the wide areas, getting balls into the box for, for you know, for, for Beasley. Um, so it was kind of like, you know, two similar kind of strides, but we did it more through the middle. And, um, you know, promise it's a big chance. I said, you know, you know, previously before the game, I think we'll go to Bloomfield Road and we'll have three or four moments in the game, whether the shot's on target, whether the, you know, a snapshot, whether it's a block or whether it's like a chance like that. And it, it just felt after that, there was it. That There was the big moment in the match and we didn't take it. You got yours, you took yours and it was simple as that. I, I thought you said piece delivery. Sorry, go on, Mitch. I was going to say, I think we're underplaying the genius of Jimmy Husband there. <laughs> I thought I actually genuinely thought it was a really good bit of defence from him, from a player that's mm. been out for whatever it is, six, seven weeks. He made and a massive difference, Mitch, didn't he? He, he, he did, and he's 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 not play. You know, I am aside from um, uh, Gary wants of this parish. Jimmy is is a player I've got a lot of time for, and he hasn't 
he hasn't looked great for the sort of whatever it was, the six, seven, eight games before he went out. He's looked he's looked shot, to be honest. But he did that thing where he comes back in after a layoff and just looks like he's had no time out at all, which is which is quite rare because most players, even Rhodes looked rusty as hell when he came back in, didn't he? And Hubby, you'd never known he'd been out, would you? Yeah, you were um, impressed with the set piece delivery. Is that what yeah, a couple of the corners. Um, is it? I forget them. Is it Kilkenny? Is it? Yeah, um, Gavin Kilkenny. Yeah, um, I thought his set piece delivery was really good. He whipped a couple in, sort of just under the bar, that mm. causes a few problems. And to be fair, up, up until the goal, you, you know, you look more likely. It, it came a little bit mm. against the run of play, um, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, it was, and it was a decent ball in from CJ and. Um, B's just got in front of Hennigan, didn't he, and, and and got his header away. But I think prior to that, it was like say you'd have that good chance. And he maybe just lacked a little bit of belief or conviction when he went through, um, mm. which might be a confidence thing, you know. Um, we have it a little bit with our strikers, but um, yeah, it was probably a little bit against the run of play when we when we went ahead. Yeah, and I I also think as well that. You know, it annoys me the way our club big these games up. And, it, you know, it's not just the Blackpool game in recent weeks that they've tried to big up. And I'm there like, you know, don't stop bigging it up. It's, you know, it's another game. You know, it's a League One game, but we need three points in. And sometimes I kind of think, well, Blackpool coming in feeling like they're playing Stevenage at home, for example, or Cambridge at home, like you did the weekend. Similar followings, to be fair. Um, and we always big up like a cup final, let's be honest about it. And it, just at times, we just need to stop that. And it gets to our players sometimes as well. Mm. And to be fair, the last time we played, at Neil Neil, we looked fired up and it looked like, right, we're ready. We mean business here. We're like, we were like, you know, we're like a, you know, like, like dogs, like literally come out the traps. Um, and I think that was a difference yesterday. I think we felt pressure on the game. You didn't. You kind of felt, well, we're at home. We're the better team. And it's been like that all season. Remember against Derby on Sky, we have a chance at nil nil. Stockley misses it just wide. They score five minutes later. We make a mistake or allow a cross to come in. And I'd say, I've said it all season, Fleetwood are the worst team in the division in big moments. In in that one moment of the game where a cross comes in, we switch off, head at bang, 1-0. And then we, we, we have got back in a lot of games, but we're only drawing them. If we kept it nil-nil through difficult moments, we have quality in that team to create chances and score a goal. Like even yesterday... Although we should have been well out of it, we still look like we could have scored three. You know, the disallowed goal, the chance by Gray at the end, which is an unbelievable save by, by Grimshaw. And then I think there's there's one just before that, isn't there? There's a scuffle from a set piece. So, um, no, it felt very scrappy, very edgy. But Blackpool always felt like, well, if we're going to score one, Blackpool are going to score two. I think we've you... definitely seen teams, we've definitely played against teams that have had less quality than Fleetwood on the pitch. I thought you had three or four actually really decent players and then probably some that were not really up to scratch. But the lad I really liked was um, the five, is it Lowell? Yeah, Boston Lowell. He looked, is he the lad who was a centre-back that's been converted to a mm. midfielder? He yeah. looked. He looked like a player to me. He, 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 I was really surprised. I thought, right, he's a big unit. And I thought he was going to sort of chuck himself about and just win possession. And then he went on these galloping runs that, that yeah, he's sort of, it's quite rare to see a player of mm. that physique that's got that technique at that level, sort of at that age as well. I thought he looked pretty good. Yeah, he's strong, he's powerful, moves with the ball. You know, from a midfielder, I just ask for two simple things, play forwards, run forwards, and he does that. And, you know, he's progressive with, with what he does. And, you know, at centre-half, I'd probably say he was our worst player in the first half of the season. I was thinking, who have we got here? And remember away at Derby, he lost the ball on debut and um, lost the ball. They can't attack, scored. And I kind of thought, here we go. And then Charlie must have seen that in him that he can bring it out. And um, been one of the better things that Charlie's done. And Wiridu, who was in centre midfield, has gone back as well. And Wiridu, since going in there, been captain as well. And um, he's been a vital player for us. And um, he's kind of kind of reunited us a little bit and got us got us a couple of results we wouldn't have got previously. At Bristol Rovers away, Boston Lowell was the best player on the pitch by a country mile. You see that, uh, yeah, yeah, he's the five. And was the other lad, the number four, the lad who's gone back into defence. Yes, yeah, yes. he was decent as well. Yeah. Just speaking about defenders, Ben. Um, another Ben, Ben Hannigan, obviously ex Blackpool yes. player. Um, 
I listened to Charlie Adams post match analysis and that he didn't seem too happy that um A Beasley's got goal side of his man for the goal and B uh the goal's gone in on the keeper's near post. I mean that Jay Lynch, I think his name is near your keeper, he's had a great mm-hmm. game. Any fault there for you from either the defender or Hannigan and how's Hannigan been generally? Uh oh, another one. Hennigan gets a lot of a lot of abuse. And look, he, he's slow and maybe again the Blackpool factor. He's not the quickest, he's not the most mobile. But every time that I, you know, there's a block and I'm there going, Hennigan, Hennigan again, he's Hennigan again. And he puts his body in the line. And he's not the nine out of ten. But you gotta remember with Fleetwood, we're in the bottom four of League One. You know, we haven't we're not the most attractive of football clubs. You know, Ben Hennigan's a decent player for, for, for this division, for the experience he got. And he, you know, without an ACL, he might still be at Sheffield Wednesday this year. Um, that kind of ruled him out for nine months. And you wouldn't know he's come back from, obviously you were saying before coming back from injury, you wouldn't know he's just spent nine months with an ACL with how much he's been playing. Like, you'd have to, to play every single game. And as soon as Vela left, I'd have given Ben Hennigan the armband, but maybe giving it with you're giving it to a young player who has stepped up. Hennigan's like, well his role doesn't change. You know, he is still a captain without the armband. So I think his leadership is, is vital on him more than kind of his playing attributes, really. So um, uh, the blame for the goal, the cross coming in, it's a soft one, getting goal side. I'm not really blaming the goalkeeper because he's a header from, what, eight yards out? It's powerful. It's headed down into the corner. It's a really good header by Beasley that, you know, is, you know, sometimes I kind of think that, well... He needs to score more goals in a forward line if you want to get into the players, but it's effective and it's a great ball in and it's a great header. Well, Tim's obviously can't turn his computer on, so we've we've just got a quick sub to come in. Join I feel like show. he shouldn't come on until the 70th minute. <laughs> 80th last night, by the way. <laughs> He's far too early. <laughs> We need a couple of Boswell brothers with an iPad to bring this up on. Uh, welcome, Andy. Thanks for coming off the bench. I like I it. Was, Red- I was just, uh, <laughs> I was just on Alison's iPad, and uh, and then and the message come through. So, so I'm officially a Boswell now. <laughs> Ju- Judith Chalmers. Is well, his, yeah, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, ben, have you uh, met Andy before? Andy's been a bit of a mainstay this season, so he wasn't on, I think, last time our paths crossed. You've upgraded so. then, have we? We've upgraded. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. The Grim, the Grim Reaper, he has been branded as on AVFTT, so he's uh, he's not happy with the season, to put it mildly. Oh, well, well, it could be worse, Andy. Is. It could be worse, you Andy. It could be a fleet with Tom. You no, 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 thanks. What I could have done when Gracie came on, he said it was Sean and it was just the stress of working for the club has paid off on him. <laughs> yeah, Sean's aged badly, hasn't he, over the last two years? <laughs> Not saying anything, Gracie, you look great from Oh, moment. you're a be- beautiful man. <laughs> Full head of hair as well. <laughs> but just going back to the game, guys, what did we think for the penalty? <laughs> Clear cut, wasn't it? Clear yeah, it was bang. It was. It was. Um, it looked to me from the south like um, like Lavery had just run into Dembele, and I thought, "What's happened there?" And then they gave a penalty. And then when you watch it back, you can see quite clearly that he gets tripped, and then he sort of flies into Dembele because he's going so fast. But it was, it was nailed on. But I felt really sorry for Labs with that penalty. I thought I've seen a lot worse penalties than that get scored, and he just can't buy a goal, can he? Just can't buy a break at the moment. And I actually watched your um, vlog, Ben, before, and you were sort of saying how he runs and he runs, and he's a you know he's a player that you like. And I think you know, there's a lot of us really like him, but he just can't get a break, can he? he? Just will not. It just will not go in for him. He just seems to go through these spells these periods where he just can't score no matter what he does did any of you go at the league cup game right at the beginning of appleton where it was it was comical the amount of times he almost scored it was like it was like there's a force field around the goal and he's just going through one of them spells now isn't he? and it's a, it's a shame for him he probably looked at I, his most dangerous first game of the season and the away game when he came on at half time against uh at yeah. Fleetwood. yeah 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 I mean, he'll never no. stop putting a putting a shift in, will he? And like you say, he just he just needs a break. I mean, to be fair, I thought it was a very good save from from the Fleetwood yeah, keeper. It was. it was, 
you like you say, it wasn't. I didn't think it was a poor penalty where he's just you know tried to be too clever or anything. He's hit it well. He's hit it right into the corner, and probably nine times out of ten, the keeper goes the other way, and it's it's a decent pen. But he, he guessed right, and he got a very strong hand on it as well. To be mm. fair to him, it was a it wasn't a poor pen. It was a decent save. Views on the pen from the away end, Ben. Oh, certain penalty. Um, I don't know what Danny May is doing. Danny Mayer came with a really high reviews and he's not lived up to it at all. And it's a stupid fought in. To be fair, what annoyed me more, going away from goal, like he was literally run all the way. And I was there like, he's going away from goal. I think it was Lavery, the one, the one running with it. And I was there like, he's not going to get a shot off. He's literally going to, and if he does get a shot off, he's going to go wide of the goal. So I thought it's stupid and ludicrous to, to give away the penalty. Then it's a really good save by, by Jalen. He saved a couple kind of this season as well. And well, he saved one and then obviously the, he scored the rebound, but it was a really good save of them. What annoyed me is the plays and the fans celebrating. I was there, like, they've got they've got a corner. Like you've got to react. Yeah, then and, and luckily we, we deal with it. And so his moments like that, it it didn't give us the spark. I thought it'd give us a little, little bit of, you know, right, we're still in this game 10 minutes ago. It didn't. Mm. And unfortunately, uh, you know, it petered out in the end. I think, I think it did change the complexion of the game slightly. Um, Fleetwood were in the ascendancy in the, in the last yeah. 10 minutes. We were, we were worried. Obviously we've got the, the other talking point before we talk about the end of the game, which was all the Fleetwood pressure and the, um, the Jay Lynch potential sending off hmm. moment when CJ was put through. Um, I've looked at it again at the time because I sit almost on top of that in the northwest corner. It looked a nailed on pen for me. I was going mad as everyone else was around me. But upon reflection and watching the replay, hmm. CJ's touch was extremely heavy to say the least. And I think if he had, if Lynch hadn't taken him out, CJ would have had the ball in the corner flag. So yeah. What's your, what was your take on that? I'm up to the view from the away end. Um, well, at first I thought he's off. You know, he, he's got sent off for something like that. Pray he likes coming off his line. He likes being proactive. And a lot of time he gets there, but against Shrewsbury, he kind of handballed it and got sent off. And then, like a minute before they scored, and that was that sums up that, that game really, that Shrewsbury game. But and then, obviously, I thought it was a red card. I thought right, Leeds is outside the box. But then my first thought was. Well, we've made out all our subs. Who's going to come on? Like, who's going to go in goal here? Um, and then looking back, it kind of looks like, well, Dembele's touch is too heavy and does Lynch catch him a little bit? But, you know, from the angles, it's really hard to see. I did think it was a red card at first. Um, for me, it was either a red card for Lynch or a yellow card for CJ Hamilton, and he never did either. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, I was very, very fortunate. For the first time this this year, I think I've praised a referee. <laughs> uh, just... Guys around the room, what was everyone's views? Nick, I'll come to you. Obviously, you were you were sat near me and had a similar similar view. Uh, yeah, I th I thought on the balance, it's it's probably a red. Um, and yeah, it was a it was a poor touch by CJ, wasn't it? Um, you know, he's knocked it sort of quite a distance, but that doesn't change the fact that you know he, he's he's taken him out and it's potentially denied a a, a clear goal scoring opportunity. So. On balance, it, it probably should have been a rad. I think he was he was lucky to stay on the pitch. Mitch, over to you, view from the south. Um, I don't know. Well, it, it looked like a nailed on red. I was, you know, baffled that he didn't give it. Um, and I've watched the, you know, I've, I've not watched the hi the highlights back in any great depth. You know, I've not not sat there and frozen frames and stuff. But it looks like a red on a replay to me as well. Um, I, I, I couldn't see why it wouldn't, and I don't, you know, I don't think refs can can avoid giving red cards on the basis that CJ probably wouldn't score. So, you know, Gracie, were you were you in the south for this? Oh, was it red? Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I I went and uh, I, I said hello. I was. We went and sat right next to the uh, away fans just to say. Uh, I'd, I'd hello to our friends from down the road um but uh, um anyway the uh yeah i've called it straight straight i called it straight away straight red sharp if only i thought he kicked it away from goal so he said maybe that was he he thought a yellow but um so is it double jeopardy only in the area isn't it so mm. like it's, if it had been a penalty he might have got away with the yellow because of uh 
the double jeopardy thing, but um, but being outside the area, I, I thought it had to be a red. But was it? I don't. I haven't looked at it back. So um, the question to me is: Would he have gone round him and scored if if the goal had not? I think we know the out? answer to that, Andy, don't we? <laughs> Probably not, but like Mitch said, that's not necessarily a re in that split second. The ref, you know, you, you're making the decision on. He in, made the decision denial. really quick, Nick, didn't he? He didn't make mm. any, you know, the way he brought his yellow out straight away. They normally do yeah. that when it's a straight red, which I mm. thought was weird. You think you just take a bit of a deep breath, compose yourself, think about it, and then make your decision. He was the loudest ref I've ever heard. I don't know if any because I don't know if anybody else noticed yeah. that, but he was shouting at the players, and you could you could hear him in a way that you really don't normally hear refs. What was the Just, most hilarious incident, Nick, with the ref? It there was when was. it was down in the corner near us, wasn't it? And who, I can't remember which players it was, but was it Joseph? Maybe they'd gone down with a Fleetwood player, and there was that moment where they tangled legs, and you think, oh, is there going to be a bit of argy bargy? And, the Fleetwood guy just put his hand out and they pulled each other up and they were, you know, sort of shaking hands. And the ref ran over as if they were like <laughs> shitting each other, like, stop. He squealed, like, didn't he? The ref doing? squealed yeah. for them to yeah. stop. Yeah. But they were just like, 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 yeah, it's like Nick, Nick said they were just all right, weren't each they? Each they were each yeah. yeah. yeah he was like a high pitch yapping dog, wasn't he? It was like, yeah. I was, I was I, at first I couldn't pick what it was. And then I was like, it's the ref. <laughs> It's like when there's a background noise on this podcast and John's getting goes, I goes all twitch. You go, what's that? What's that? Gracie, have you got your microwave on? Like that. Yeah, I remember there was that rogue wasp. The rogue wasp and uh, Joe's tumble dryer was the worst. That used to drive you mental. Oh, dear. Um, the, the resultant free kick, Ben, um, Quite funny, my sister said it. Watch this, it'll just get, it'll just get driven straight at the wall, and that happened. But uh, Kerry got off a snapshot from the rebound, and another top draw save by uh, by Jay Lynch, uh, another mm. brilliant save. Yeah, um, again, Sonny Kerry must have had three or four pearls from there, and he he's a bit like um, one of those. Like I took ten thousand shots, and my top ten goals are insane. Sonny Kerry, that he has a lot of efforts from outside the box, and you know he does score some good goals, and you know he was a constant threat yesterday. I think he's out of contract in the summer, isn't he? As well, so he's maybe got something to to, to prove for as well. But you know, look, he, he, two of his goals at Fleetwood, he scored four whole year. So if half of them have come against us this year as well, and um, um, no good, good player for the level, but the free kick was there. Uh, I thought good area, um, mm. probably just just close enough, not too far away. Um, but you know, you've got to be doing it better to get it than two two yards off the, off the ground. It's very sunny though, in a way that the more time he has to think, sometimes the more he, mm. he and and sort of the free kick wasn't great, but then the snapshot was a well, that was great. Because he had to do that instinctively, and I think there's 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 that bit about him. The the less Sonny thinks about his game, the better play you've got there. And I think he's 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 well, I'm on record as I think he's a very player with a lot of potential if we can get that confident Sonny Carey play in every week. Somebody somebody around me for the first time ever shouted as soon as we got the free kick, get Connolly on. Was it with a sense of irony, Andy, or was it serious? Uh, no, uh, well, he's the only one that scored a free kick in years, isn't he? He, he does take a good free kick, kick Connolly. He, yeah, he, really he, he, he definitely scored that free kick when we won 6 1, was it, against yeah. QPR? Yeah. He had a brilliant one. He had a brilliant one. That Wolves game, we lost 5 0 in the League Cup. He had a brilliant, it was about the only thing that happened that was any good, was Connolly took about a 30 yard of it. Hit the, the bar from there. It was yeah, the best the bit of the game. And there was a we had that chance from Byers as well, didn't we? Which um, yeah. I don't know how close it was because couldn't see it's on the angle. That. But yeah, I thought I was expecting that to hit the back of the net. It was kind of pulled back to him, wasn't it? And he he got got his shot away, but unfortunately the wrong side of the post. And then there was the the absolute world he saved from from Grimmy for for the the second match in a row where you look back at it and I don't think the Fleetwood lad could believe it, you know, because he he hit it really really well and um you know i think that this the term worldy gets you probably overused um 
but I think it was it's probably appropriate in that instance. It was uh it was a hell of a save. He caught it sweet, didn't he? Mm. Caught it. He just caught it, bob on, and just like one of those reaction saves on it. Just uh, like I, I think I was derided when I said that uh, Grimmy should have saved or should have done better with the goal at uh, Bolton away when Thomason hit that one, and, and maybe a few people thought I was being unfair to Grimmy, but like that that was. That, exactly the thing last night and the Cambridge one where he's just complete reaction saves. I just he just misjudged that one at Bolton, didn't he? Mm. But like those two good saves, then the last minute against in both or late on in both games. We've we've got there's another uh, very contentious point that we've not discussed. You know, we have talked about it, not not in any depth. Was the the Lonergan disallowed goal? Um, Ben, mm. obviously, from your your viewpoint, you're probably best equipped to say was it on, was it on, when it was it off. I've watched, uh, as Mitch said before, I have actually paused on the, the highlights to try and get a bit, a bit of a better angle. But it it's it's a very tight call. Looked level from the from the replays I've watched. Lonigan was on. I think it's Stockley um, mm. that is slightly off, and they both go in for a header. And I think stock on the pitch, of stock looks like that next but he's about that far away. And I kind of think, well, is he in the goalkeeper's kind of visions? Is he going to head the ball? So I think that's why they've given it off. Um, I kind of was just in the mood of like, right, do we really deserve a point over all the, out the whole game? That although Blackpool were probably a six or a seven out of ten again for their standards, Fleetwood still again haven't been a team that haven't been great. And I kind of like, like, well, a point realistically does it do us any good? Uh, it's disappointing, don't get me wrong, but um, it would have been a get-out-of-jail-free card, if I'm honest with you, but it's still disappointing when you score in the last minute again. And um, I kind of think that would have been the story of Blackpool's season, they're hanging on, hanging on, and they've done that a lot this season, Blackpool, haven't they? I know they've kept 17 clean sheets now. You know, maybe, you know, it does bite you, um, you know, eventually, you know, being one nil up and kind of, trying to hold on and hold on. Um, Shrewsbury did it early in the year and it, it didn't work for Matt Taylor and Shrewsbury. Blackpool are a better version of that, but um did look on. Um, but yeah, disappointing. Very disappointing. We could get that on the uh, banner at the other end, at the ground as well. We were stuck mm. with him and then underneath, slightly better Shrewsbury. Like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> just, just generally then, um, before Ben goes around the room, um, I was reasonably impressed with Fleetwood. They were a lot, they were a lot mm. better than I expected. They passed the ball around well. They were getting out of tight scenarios with you know quick triangles, getting out, playing out. And I was speaking to. I think, um, I think they were unlucky. I think they were very unlucky to lose the game. I think they deserved probably a point at the, at the very least. I, I, I was speaking to Mark Joseph today. I was at, at the club today, and uh, the. We were, we were discussing that last night and and he said he was really impressed with their intent to get on the front foot and to get the ball. They'd obviously realised with Blackpool, you've got to get the ball quickly forward and get at us quickly. And and But for a bit of quality, what the, the thing that I felt um, was they turned the ball over to us too easily. There was, there was too many, um, too many uh, wayward passes, and and just just simple balls that they just got wrong, um, and you just felt like that was that was probably hurting them. I mean, we'll take that all day, but like realistically, a, a bit better quality there, and I think they'd have had us last night, to be honest. And and, and they had that first minute, first few minutes, didn't they, with the lad through and. And like Ubby's, he's ended up looking back on it. Ubby's made a great challenge, hasn't he? But I, from the south, I thought he'd miscontrolled it, but it, it wasn't. It was Ubby who got back. But if he'd have shot earlier, he would have, uh, he'd have had a, a good go at it, wouldn't he? I, I was very impressed with the, um, the, probably in a similar vein to what you've just said, Andy, but the pace of some of the attacking moves and the, I always feel about us is, you know, let's not go over the knocking it around the back and all that again. But 
like we're fine it feels like that's what we practice in training is that we practice how we play in one half of the pitch and then when we get at the other end of the pitch sometimes we look a bit lost as what to do we sometimes not as direct as we could be on the times last night when there was Coulson, Hubby and Carey and he was sort of trying to play triangles, but there wasn't really the, the, the penetration from it. Whereas Fleetwood were almost the reverse of that. They looked a bit shaky sometimes when they were doing the possession work. But once when they when they sprung and went, it was like bang, 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 bang shot that was actually really impressive some of the, the, the pace of some of that attacking play um and i don't know whether that's sort of integral to fleetwood or whether it's something adams worked with with them on and it's a sort of sign of of the way he coaches them but it was it was a lot more impressive than some of the other sides and like i said before i think we've seen certainly over the two games i think we've seen far worse teams this year um from the snapshot of fleetwood i've seen yeah, I agree. There's just one thing in the comments that Bison has mentioned that I was going to say. Um, I thought they gave Byers quite a lot of space in the middle. You know, yeah. he was getting on the ball quite a bit and there mm. were some big gaps which allowed him to, you know, do his thing. And he, he had a good game, but I think that it was, he doesn't always get that sort of space that, that he got last night. I suppose that's what I'm alluding to, Nick, is that, you know, it's it's the battle of sort of the Critchley shape in and out of possession mantra mm. versus a side that maybe don't drill those things quite as much. But the flip side of that is that intact attacking incision that mm. we, we, attacking we do lack. Like, yeah. Where's the Timism box? That, that number five for, for Fleetwood looks to unit, didn't he? Oh we've, yeah. We've, we've done already him, discussed yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want him. Right, uh, well, 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 three chance, sir. Three chance, sir. You can have, <laughs> you can have the pick of uh, any one of seventeen from our squad. You can have Matty Virtue, Callum Connolly, or um, yeah, you yeah. can have Connolly back, Ben. Yeah, the, the, you know, back. you say that they'll both walk into our team. Like I've, I'd have had Virtue at the start of the season. I think he's a decent League One player. Yeah, he's, he's actually at our level. Virtue's like, all right, but he's League just... One. I, I'm 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 unfair on virtue because he just literally his job for us is to play five minutes a week. That's all he ever does. Mm. I think our players have had that all season. To be fair, <laughs> right, Ben, just cl uh, closing thoughts before you, we let you go. Um, yes, you, you, I'm just looking at the table now. You're six points behind, but Port Vale are getting beat tonight. So. Uh, What's your what's your gut feel? Do you think you're gonna perform a great great escape and uh, Charlie's gonna lead you to the promised land of League One survival? Well, people say to me, well, if we win four out of our next four or three out of our next four, bear in mind we've won three in twenty six and seven games all season. <laughs> come on now, you know, come on. You know, it's it, look, Northampton is a tough game. Peter away tough game. Late night, really good side. You know, as you found out as well early in the season as well. You managed to score against them in, in your two meetings, and they're the well, well drilled under Rich Ellens and Burton. You know, look, it, it it's all gone wrong this season with it with the ownership, three managers, and we deserve to go down. We've been in this league ten years, overachieved. Um, look, we've had a budget. I'm not going to deny that. We've been lucky to to have that funding. Um, but no, it, it is good. And I think the better team did win yesterday. Um, we had chances. There was moments in the game where I thought we could have snatched a point. And if you're going on, on the bigger chances, maybe you know, we'd, we weren't far behind you. But look, it could have been either one of one all or four one or three one. It could have been any score yesterday. Um, it was it was an all right one nil. But um, um, no, it was um, it was a horrible game yesterday get yesterday to lose it kind of summed it up and look we can't get relegated on saturday so that that's that's my first my first thought could we get relegated yesterday i thought well that would be an absolute disaster but i wouldn't be going on social media for about three months believe me but uh, but no thank you for having me on i think i've been a well 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 behaved lad tonight well just, <laughs> just did you start off with just, a just, yeah well yeah just just to see you off ben uh phil home has dropped a, a good comment yeah. on there great to see nappers that we all agree with that sentiment phil he is a c but not the c bomb he is a class act so um yeah
Thanks for coming on, mate. Uh, it's been no a pleasure worries. as always. And you know, you may pull off the great escape, and uh, we may cross paths again, and that'd be great to see you next season if we do. So all the best. Thanks very much, mate. All the best, guys. Cheers, Ben. Cheers, Cheers Ben. Man. See you later. Right, so we've scraped another victory last night. Let's let's bring this banner up. Uh, lucky to win both games. Question. Oh, actually, just before we go, uh, just before we move on to that, um, the, the Critch Fist was back again. The Critch Fist was back. A bit cringeworthy was my description. Why does he do it? I think the North were asking for it, were they? Some Calling of them. him over. Um, I, I'd, I'd gone. I was, we were just getting back to the car, but I heard it. So I, I knew it had happened. Um, yeah, I think we've talked about this a lot, haven't we? Um, it's kind of a bit tired it's now. Important. and Yeah, I'm surprised anybody, you know, sort of hangs around for it to happen, to be honest. Um, I mean, there's been games where we've won and he hasn't done it. So I thought it was... Um, Put it away it unless we're going. Bad. Put it away unless we're making the playoffs. We we were still in. We were still in at that point in obviously in South uh, South Stand. But like were, were you asking no for one. it, Andy? Uh, were you honestly, asking for if it? If he come down our end and he got something completely <laughs> different. He was he was there with his arms like oh yeah. sorry. It, it, like oh, imagine yeah, if the I can... imagine if the camera panned onto Christ and he was actually doing it. <laughs> he got a pop. It had got proper, it had got proper fist in him, and it come down <laughs> our end. Honestly, you don't want to hear me and Cole does he and Charlton, Jesus <laughs> Christ, like he would have properly got it. I think I might right, move my but, season ticket to the south next season, Andy. Just, oh, mate, just, just, just for the fun. just for the great lols. Fun. He's yeah, ninety eight percent critically out in the south. It's great, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's only because there's only about twenty five us in there. <laughs> and, but when he when he goes down to the uh, when he goes down to the um, when he oh sorry when he went across to the south uh, north sorry um, I mean there was no one in the top half of the stand everyone was on the way down and whatever and so most of it was the guys around the concourse and 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 honestly it's kids it, it, mm. like what I think majority of the people that you would associate. Like we're thinking it was a rubbish idea, it had already gone, um, like Nick said. Um, so um, you were left with the uh, the kids, and I think uh, he's a bit more easily impressionable than uh, uh, than the rest of us, to be honest. Um, but it's it, it's it's gone, and it. I mean, Jesus Christ, if you're celebrating a one nil at home to Fleetwood, we've we've got a few issues, haven't we? As the no. previous banner just said, lucky to win both win games, question mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try and deal with this as positively as I can. I think we have been lucky to win both games and we've relied on a post and a grimy wonder save in in and stuff like that. That said, we should really have put both games to bed. And I think if you try, I've, I've been desperately trying to find some positivity about it. And I think the positivity I can find is that I can kind of put my finger on what we're missing now. Whereas I couldn't earlier in the season and we're definitely, we're 100% missing a striker that can score some goals. Um, we, we're missing other things as well. I mean, we're not just missing that, but, if you look at um, if you look at shots on goal and if you look at XG, Rhodes is way ahead of anybody else, um, and that tells its story. It says that our strikers they're not. It's not that they're missing loads of chances. It's that not doing the things that they're not actually doing the things that they need to do to score goals or to link with our midfield. Um, and I suppose we come back to the question. We were we were only lucky to win the games because we didn't finish the games off when we when we should have done. We should have scored. We should have scored again in that in the second half against Fleetwood. We should have scored again 
um, in the first half against Cambridge. We didn't, and hence we ended up being lucky. Is this lot going to see us through and sneak into the playoffs, Nick? Else is gone. If I said I'm going to cheat, I said I'm going to try. I'll another positive uh, banner. Unbeaten in eleven at home now, and only conceded four goals. Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there, there are positives, and I agree a lot with what Mitch said. You know, in the, in the strikers, I think Joseph, you know, he's just really lacking confidence, isn't he? He's he, he probably just needs a really good run in the side, and he's he's not going to get it. I know there's only a few games left, but I think he either there wasn't. You know, he's in and out. Um, are, are we going to do enough? <sighs> well, I think it might just be taken out of our hands anyway with, with other teams and, you know, and what they need to do. So I still think we will just miss out. Um, won't be an easy game against Barnsley at home um, and, and Reading away won't be easy either. And they'll, you know, Carlisle are down, but I suppose in a way the pressure's off for them, isn't it? It's, they can play with freedom and, you look at you look at our away performances against teams in the the bottom half of the league, and it's littered with really poor performances um, where teams don't have to be great to beat us. So I, I don't, you know, you don't you, you think back to the the teams that have got promoted previously, and we've got the best record in the playoffs. And there was always a very similar feeling, wasn't there, with whichever team it was? It's probably how Lincoln fans feel at the moment. You weren't bothered who we played because you knew we were good enough. Um, and even when we, we we threw it on the last day of the season, automatic under under Billy Air, you still felt going into those playoffs. Well, we've got we've got real, you know, um, attacking quality players in the team, and we can do it. You don't feel like that now, you know. Even even with the wind, you feel a bit like that was a bit laboured. We you know we got over the line and. If if it did happen, and I don't think it will, could could we turn up for three lots of ninety minutes when you know consecutively two playoff games and a, and a final when we've probably not done that for three consecutive games all season? So you know, on the balance of it, you'd have to say probably not. As good as our playoff record is, and it's the Blackpool way, this doesn't feel like a Blackpool way team at the moment. It, it feels like we're not quite good enough for the playoffs. We've been in eighth place on and off forever, and I think that's probably where we'll end up. But it's pretty, you, you, you can't, you couldn't honestly say, oh, I feel like we've, we, we should be two places higher, and we, we deserve to be two places higher because we, we don't really, do we? You know, we are where we are for a reason. You'd have to say that's that's fair enough. Looking at that running graphic on the screen there, gents, um, you look at Oxford, three home games, three tough home games against promotion contenders, Peterborough, then Lincoln, then Stevenage, and Exeter away. Probably that's, that's an easier game. We've got Carlisle away, Barnsley at home, Reading away. Um, Stevenage... I was looking at theirs, apart from Oxford away, they've got Burton at home and Cheltenham at home. Theirs looks the easiest running to me, and we've finally got Lincoln, um, home a game against Wigan, away at Oxford, away at Cheltenham, and then they've got Pompey as well at home. So I think it's hard to look beyond Lincoln or Oxford because the game in hand, but they're playing each other. But Stevenage looks like they've got a pretty easy running as well. And I suppose with Portsmouth, sorry, yeah, I, I suppose Portsmouth will be up, won't they? You would think. Um, yeah. By the time they play Lincoln, champions always lose like five nil on the last day of the season, don't <laughs> yeah, they? Because the players are just on the beach, yeah. aren't they? Bristol Rovers yeah. didn't against Blackpool um, <clears throat> in the late eighties. Oh, no, few few little bits to me, like using the Nappers analogy. Um, of they've won three games in the last 26 and now they're wanting to win three games out of the last four to stay up. Like, Ain't how, many games, how many games we won away all season now we want to win two out of two. Um, you know, and and at any other time of the season, Reading away is a tough... It is. A tough away game, right? And could you imagine things being on that last day? Well, at least Critchley's used to playing behind closed doors. So, like, because that's realistically what might happen. 
um, you know, because the football league might uh, might um, make the teams play behind closed doors before they not let any fans in because of the risk of uh, the game um, doing a black the game being in, interrupted. And and don't I wouldn't be surprised if they did that because if there's something on it. But the one I don't think, would. I think, I think there's them. a lot of organisation to do around this. Are they are they not in um, talks to sell the club now? Reading, they not agree. Are they in? Did I read a couple of weeks ago? Um, <laughs> I'll take that. I as a, that Thailand as a as a now. I'm sure they were. Uh, I saw something on Twitter. I can't remember. It was Kieran Maguire. Or not. Yeah, like I use that in a while. Nick, I thought. I thought. I. Th- my general vague sense was that stuff had improved a bit for Reading, but I, I can't really say what specifically it is that has improved. We all don't like Reading anyway. I never have for an inexplicable reason. I don't like them. So, but it's always the we always do poorly there. They were no sponsored by Waitrose way. once, weren't they? No, I, for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's I, not. That's not. A, an Didn't they have sponsor, the uh, down on their arm one year? They had the varying um, average temperature of the earth uh, going progressively redder to illustrate the challenges <laughs> the world faces by climate change. Yeah, I think that was last year. I think we're talking I, about bad sponsors, though. You know, Price Busters. Yeah, yeah Price Busters is accessible <laughs> to the working man, Nick. We've had about know? six that have gone bust. <laughs> And, and I hear Sadler's after one of their players, by the way, that Reading lad that's got about 18 letters in his surname so that Sadler can get the shirt sales up. His, his shirt would be about 15 quid, uh, 15 quid just for the letters. <laughs> it's like it's, 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 it's like a mad name. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. Looking at that then, flag in the sand. Who's going to hit that coveted sixth spot in League One? I don't care who's, who goes up other than us, to be honest. And ju- I I mean, I think Lincoln are in form, aren't they? And I think probably out of those three teams, on paper, Oxford are probably the best team. So it'll be between Lincoln or Oxford. But mm, do you know what I think is going to happen with us? I think, I think we're going to keep... We're going to keep stumbling towards the line and it's just going to keep going for us. And it's going to come down to goal difference and we're not going to make it. And in a way, I feel like that would be sort of poetic justice because it's been there's almost this standoff with Critch going, we don't need to score any more goals. And everyone going, we want more goals. And then if we missed out on goal difference, we can all go, we were right. <laughs> it's... Um... It wouldn't be it wouldn't be right if we didn't finish eighth, would it? No, to be fair, bloody been there all year. We, we must be the Guinness Book of Records for the uh, for being in eighth for the longest time in any league. It'd be hilarious if we made the playoffs, though, wouldn't it? It'd be the most oh. undeserving team to ever well, get in the playoffs. You know when they always say, "Oh, there's the team that goes under the radar." We we would be the first team to have gone underneath our own radar, wouldn't it? With all of us, you know, we haven't noticed that we're getting there, let alone anybody else. It's just mad. Uh, As you guys said before, though, like when we've got in the playoffs before, it's like you. It's just felt completely different, and it? it's never felt yeah. like this, has it? It's never ever felt like this. That and as someone put, as someone put, and it might have been Raggy, right? Like, it's can someone explain how this club feels so flat? It just feels so flat, and and can someone explain why that is? And I obviously I sit in a camp of um, of why I think it is. But you know, today, today I'm discussing with certain things, and and uh, apparently, uh, you know, I'm being told today that Swansea Julian's doing a, you know, he's doing a great job, and he, he's doing a better job than Mansford did, and things like that. So, so if that's the case, fair play to him, and and uh, and hopefully 
hopefully he is and, and he, he's able to galvanise. It doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to be about him and he's not trying to um, bump himself. So hopefully he's doing the right job as a CEO, but the club just fit, f- feels flat. And I think that has to come from the manager and the style of play. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we can get some change, whatever that is. I, if if Critchell is staying, he's got to acknowledge it and, and somehow play a different way or with much better players for this system that can move the ball faster. Um, or like we've we've got to change the manager and, and and get a different feel to it because it is too flat and and the and the ground's gone flat. Um so like I think Andy, just before uh, you you jumped on, um I was saying to the to the rest of them that I've never um uncelebrated a, a goal in, in in a reasonably important game against um you know a team that's local to us, Fleetwood. Yeah, then the goal yesterday, I barely left my seat. It was like, yeah, normally it'd be up and all over the place, but it's just there is there's a there is a general malaise around the place. I don't, I don't think out. it's um, well, that, sorry, I, I don't think that. it's necessarily flat in terms of what what's going on in the background. You know, where there's there's the training ground happening, and I'm sure that. You know the club's been running the right way. I, I get that it's flat. It, it feels flat because of what's going on on the pitch, doesn't it? I think if performances were good, we'd be saying it's, you know, it, holistically it's it's all good. I, there's, there can still be a lot of good stuff going on behind the scenes, but you you focus on on what's going on on the pitch naturally. Um, I still think we're in a very good place off the pitch, and you know Simon Sadler's doing absolutely the right thing. We talked about the training ground on the last pod, so. I think there's a lot of good stuff going on still. It's just that we're, we're not buzzing about performances. You know, I think it's it, it, it's two separate things still. I think. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think anyone's and no, no one, no one that I'm talking to is saying Sadler out or anything like that. That's not that's not what's happening. But you 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 nailed it. It's a, it's it's what's happening on the pitch. I think and and the style of play. Sorry. Sorry, Matt. Say Craig's comment there. He says not not one interview with Critch where you thought, yeah, he really fancies having a go at teams. And I heard him on Lanks before. I can't remember which game, Cambridge or Fleetwood, and it was Andy Bayes, who's who's he's quite a good interviews Bayes, and he sort of set him up really well. He said, uh, you keep a lot of clean sheets, Neil. And he said, oh, yes, 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 we are, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he says, you're not scoring many goals, though, are you? What are you going to do about that? And he, he just the way he, he responded with something like, get our shooting boots on and quality in key moments. And I thought, yeah, but what about making more chances, Neil? You know, what, what about that? What about... Um, Killing games. Yeah, and, and at the end of the day, I think there's a little bit about sort of he he has this mantra of quality in key moments he says it over and over again and i get that you have to demand quality from players but if you look at this you know the strike force and to be fair to him he did say it's not all about the strikers but you look at the strike force beasley will never be prolific he's a support striker kawasi will never be prolific he's a support striker lavery and joseph have both got confidence through the floor you know their confidence is subterranean it's that low and you sort of you say, no, the, the the reason we're not scoring is because we're not good enough in those in those clinical moments. And I think I had a look at where we were compared to um, twenty twenty one in terms of goals scored and conceded, and we've played three games less, obviously, in the end of the season. We've only conceded five more goals, but we've scored seventeen less. And you kind of think. We, we're we not that high in the chance created table. I looked at us compared to Fleetwood for um, chances created and actually Fleetwood have created more or less the same amount of chances in games than we've created. And I think that's something that does frustrate about Critchley is that that lack of self-reflection about that overall structure, that, that sense that it's all fine. We just lack that quality. And you're like, yeah, but we are what we are. We've got the players that we've got. Just saying that there's a lack of quality, that's not really helping us believe in the fact that we're going to improve, if that makes sense. You know, it's it, it's almost as if he's deflecting from what he's doing. And it, it's 
it is flat and it's edgy and it, it's it's not it's not fun at the moment, you know, it's, it's, I'm not, I'm not moaning. I'm just observing. And, and it, it's a bit sort of, I don't know. I think it's a bit, I can't throw tense or passive aggressive, you know, the, and it, it's a shame really. And like Andy said, I think that we, you know, we've got to hope that we get to the end of the season and then he goes away and reflects and comes up with something new. Because I do don't think, think he's going do anywhere. Think, do we think he will? I don't. Uh, we'll see. I mean... He's scared to lose, isn't he? He's, it, he's just... We've spoken about this many times, but he's he's just not the guy that we had before. And and unless Sadler can talk, talk him round into being the braver version of himself, I think we, we'd just rinse and repeat. Um, to be honest, I mean, like the the other way round is if is, is if they can um, build a, a a different squad who can move the ball quicker and uh, and and have a lot more energy w- within how they play. But um, you know, like other teams get fantastic low knees, don't they? We've got Dembele would would uh, I think he's been uh, one of our best, if not the best player. So we've done quite well with him, but but it, it we all surely what we should aim for is a quality squad with maybe two addition or additional low knees, and then we get to Christmas and we look at covering injuries with a couple of more low knees down the down the line. But just getting our low knees need to be starters. We can't bring in like average low knees young kids who, who, who probably won't off, offer anything uh, but next season we get the uh, we get the uh, the golden rob up to back don't we so uh, how he he would struggle to fit into our system i think um the way rob up to plays and the, and where he's playing for Tranmere. So would like we Owen change Dale, our Andy. System? Owen Dale's another one wasn't he he couldn't yeah, fit into that well, system yeah well will we change our system to to adapt to what we've got. That's what you do. You you play with the hands you dealt with as a manager. You play the system that suits the players best. Well he's he's Rob Apter is going to be one of our creative players next year. Surely from what he's doing with Tramme, you'd think that he's going to become one of our creative players if we're staying in this league. Right. So so surely we're going to fit a system to to fit in with our creative players. Although and, uh, season's, not, season's not over yet. Season's not over true. yet. That's We've true. got Carlisle away on Saturday. Um, Nick, you're going. Andy, are you going? I uh, have chosen to go to work, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, I can't Sorry. remember if you said you're going or not. You've told me. I've just completely I am going forgot. Yet. Yeah, I am. Bottom of the league, Carlisle. Surely another three points for Blackpool. Well, I, I spoke to their podcast earlier on, sort of did a, a 10 or 15 minute slot, and he was asking me about how the season had gone and you know what, what they might expect. And um <laughs> I can't remember if I said it on air, but I certainly said it afterwards. Don't expect us to turn up and be like this team who are piling forward from the from the kickoff you know guaranteed to to get these three points because we need it um i mean it'd be a bloody surprise if we do but we do need the three points don't we but i i suspect it'll be probably more of the same and another kind of um play out from the back see how we go find margins all of that stuff and you know will we get anything out of the game um we will see we, we've got to win it if we want to you know carry on with uh, any hope of the playoffs, so you never know. But can you go into it even on the back of two wins with with too much confidence? I don't. I don't think you can just because we've had so many of these type of games where we're just, you know, not great. The opposition don't need to be great to beat us. Work out what they need to do to neutralize our threat, and we don't. We don't have a plan B, do we? Um, so yeah, we're going to win three <laughs> 0 what was what was I the think, general I mood then from the the the, the from, Carlisle? From Carlisle. Um, what was what was there? Well, he was talking about their owners and these American owners who've come in and they're doing a lot to improve 
the infrastructure of the club. I asked him about Simo, you know, because you think for a, a team getting relegated, there would be a, a lot of pressure on the manager. And he said kind of probably 80, 85% still want him in and are behind him. The board really, really like him and it looks like they're going to stick with him for, for next season. Um, he said when they came up, it was maybe almost a bit too soon and, you know, they kind of got up through the playoffs and they weren't necessarily the, the third or best, te- uh, best team in that division, but they managed to get promoted. Um, so I think it's, although they've been relegated, he was he was still quite positive about what was going on around the club. So, yeah, and I mean, I, I kind of wanted him to stay up because I think if we're in this division next season, which I think we will be, it was... It's a good trip, Carlisle. I quite like it. You know, it's um, it's quite a good day out. So it's a bit of a shame they've gone down, really. The chicken farmers might be in League One next season. They uh, they're only three points out the relegation zone in the Championship after getting beat five nil tonight. They lost five nil tonight. Yeah. Jeez, I can't see them dropping, Andy. I think, they're only three I points. They've got they're enough three points out the out the relegation zone. They've. It's been That's done a five one win then a five five nil, nil loss, win isn't it? five nil loss at to uh, at uh, Bristol City. Yeah, but they won five one the game before, didn't mm-hmm. they? I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Carlisle have conceded seventy five goals this season. They've only won I, seven. I, my impression of the home game against Carlisle was that they were one of those teams where you can kind of stand there for a bit and then they'll make a mistake and you'll score a goal. You know, that they really were, they really did look not very good at football. Um, my mate's a Carlisle fan and he said they've had a slight upturn of late. <laughs> so maybe they, they won't be night, quite so bad, but pardon? They won, they won two out of five. They yeah, they beat Peterborough, didn't they? Away, they beat Peterborough. And now Cheltenham. Drew with Stevenage. Drew with Stevenage, I know Mox. Yeah. And it's that thing, isn't it? The pressure, you, you see it sometimes, don't you? To a certain extent, we had that with the Dobster last season with ourselves, is mm. that you get to the end of the season, the, the kind of the pressure comes off or, or the or the desperation comes in or whichever, whatever way you look at it and, and you suddenly get these performances that you haven't seen all season. Um so hopefully we don't get that, and hopefully we get the the the, the shambolic Carlisle. Um, they're obviously they've lost Mox and haven't they? Who was who was absolutely crucial to them. So you know they they're, they're without the player that kind of got them up, and and sort of their talisman. So you know I, I just worry about us scoring goals, and I genuinely think sort of I feel more confident to be honest that. I mean, the one thing we didn't say was that we didn't, John. We didn't actually mention how delightful it was to see a diving header at Blainfield Road, which was an oversight by us, wasn't it, really? Was it a proper it diving header, like, though? Was it, it was more it was of a belly flop. Of a header, I think it was more of a yeah. stooping header. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, I, I wrote it up as a bit of a belly <laughs> flop of a header rather than a diving <laughs> header. But, but I'm more confident in Caddy, Sonny and Byers popping one in than I am of our front players popping one in, to be honest. And that that's that's the worry for me. Because it because in a, a side who've gone down, they might be quite open, you know, they might just have a go. They might just try and enjoy it and you know get the fans singing and enjoy playing football because you might as well. Um and that might give us quite a few chances, but it might also be a risk for us. And I just worry about us taking the chances. I worry about us scoring the goals because we, you know, we've got We've got an appalling record in front of goal for a side that they're looking to go up. Right, round the room, match predictions. More. True, true. The guy just said about Morgan coming on last Yeah, night. yeah. yeah. Like and Morgan, Morgan, Morgan is yeah. that again. That's, you know, you fancy him to score, but he's not a striker. I think I went one all with my prediction, John, on the Carlisle pod. I'm going to go for another 1 0 to us. Rice Reaper. Uh, obviously 1-0. Don't know which <laughs> way, though. <laughs> right. I'm going to go bizarre. I'm going to take... God knows how we're going to do this, by the way. I'm going to take that we're going to be 2-1 down and he's going to throw the kitchen sink at it and we'll win 3-2. Sounds like 
Yeah, no, I, I could I could go with that. I was I was on a similar level. I was gonna go three one. It's gonna be horrible and tetchy and bad tempered for about seventy five minutes and then we'll they'll just fall apart and we'll score three times. Which was a very similar logic, Andy, to yours, I think. Just had that feeling. That that Critchley has no nothing in this game now to 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 do anything but win. He, they they know that they have to win this game, yeah. right? So if they if they're behind for any point at any point, they've got to go for it, haven't they? And like, like he's he's had to throw the kitchen sink twice this season, Peterborough at home and um, in the league and um, and Fleetwood away, um, Fleetwood away, and I think it was Raggy wasn't it? He's, he's a, said we played with absolute chaos in both games. It was like chaotic, and and we love a bit of chaos, and and it seems to suit this this group when there's a bit of chaos, when they can throw off the uh, the critically organised shackles and just play off the cuff, and uh, and maybe that suits them, and uh, and and so so I'm all for it if they want to play like that. And and the way for this to to happen is for someone to hide the Boswell's iPad pre-match. So oh, right. any of the uh... Earn it. <laughs> if the uh, kit man have got access to it, upload a virus, hide it, chuck it throw in Throw it river. in the away end and they can oh. throw it around for 90 minutes. Sean will be watching because it's probably his job to monitor the various podcasts and stuff and report back. <laughs> so we'll say, Sean, hide the charger. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Good comedic uh, moment to end the, if end Sean, the show. If, Sean, uh, if Sean's listening, Sean, don't charge the iPad in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was <Right>. up. <laughs> right, thanks for input as ever, gents. Thanks, Grace, for coming off the bench. Um, yeah, we'll be in a very elated or sad mood after the trip to Winter Park Rose. Rains be said, is thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for downloading Up the Pool. Come on, the pool. Up the pool. Up the pool. Up the pool.